Hello friends, welcome to the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to study about the authentication protocols. We have learned about why the authentication is required amongst the users who are in communication with each other in our previous lectures, wherein we have uh, saw that how the authentication takes place, how the authenticated user sends its identity to the person with whom the sender wants to start communication with and how the person then starts communication with the other user so let's begin with the authentication protocols if we define it then there is a difference between authentication and what the authorization is. So authentication is defined as the process of verifying a principal's identity. That principal is nothing but a person who he or she is or the person what the person is. And the authorization is the process of determining whether a principal can perform certain action or not whether a principal has been given the authority to perform that particular action or whether the particular person has been given the authority to access a particular data that is the meaning of authorization so authentication deals with the question of whether you are actually communicating with a specific process and authorization is concerned with what that process is permitted to do here is an example of it now, there are two different types of authentication protocols, which we can say as the two different broad categories of authentication protocol, that is mutual authentication and the one-way authentication. So let's begin with mutual authentication protocol. Enables, it enables communicating parties to satisfy themselves mutually about each other's identity and to exchange the session keys. In this protocol, to prevent compromise of session keys essential identification and the session key information must be communicated in encrypted format this protocol prevents the action of the replay attacks and this replay attacks then can be prevented with the help of the timestamps or the challenge response mechanism we will be seeing in the next slides so mutual authentication follows two approaches that is the symmetric approach and the public key approach what happens in symmetric approach is a user let's take an example user a wants to start communication with user b so user a will first communicate it with kdc and kdc is nothing but key distribution center then the key distribution center will reply back to user a and with the key which is then provided by kdc to user a for b then A will be utilizing that key to start communication with B. Once A has sent a message to B, B will reply back with its identity to user A. And thus, A and B will share a secret key amongst them to start communication with each other. And that secret key will only then be used for the encryption and decryption process. And in the public key encryption approach, user a first communicating with authentication server authentication server is then replying back to user a and with the data received from the authentication server user a will then start communication with b so here the key distribution center and the authentication servers plays important role in proving the identities of the users this is an example with the public key of mutual authentication where we can see if alice and bob wants to start starts communication with each other then alice is sending a message r2 to bob with bob's public key r is replying back to alice with the message it has received from alice and for a new message and for a message to bob that is R1, which is then encrypted with the Alice's public key. Alice will then reply back with 
the received message from the bob to the bob hence they will be mutually authenticating themselves with the public keys of each other so how to obtain store validate bob's public key so this is nothing but it will then be accommodated or take will take place with the help of obviously the key distribution centers with secret key the mutual authentication can take place in such a manner wherein the alice is sending a high message to bob saying hi i am alice bob is then replying back to alice with r1 alice is then providing a functionality with the key which is then considered as a secret key that is being used for the encryption of the message which the alice has received from the bob so the re message received by alice from the bob is then encrypted using a secret key and sent back to bob which then assures to bob that whatever the message bob has sent for alice has been received by alice only and thus with this encrypted message alice is also sending a new message that is r to bob and then bob is replying back with the encrypted form of r2 message to alice hence they are authenticating one other this is mutual authentication with secret key which we have already seen and how the reflection type of the attack can takes place in the mutual authentication with the secret key if suppose any third person pretends to be the alice if suppose here trudy pretends to be the alice then trudy sends the message to r1 but bob is unaware that the message which bob is receiving is from the trudy so bob is replying back with the same message and with the secret key also which bob has shared with the alice and in such a manner the trudy then gets the secret key also the message which the alice has sent for the bob and thus the trudy then can become the person who is getting all your confidential information that's why this type of the reflection attack can take place with the secret key mutual authentication solution for this is we have to maintain the separate keys for each direction requirements on the r values that is odd number of values should be generated in one direction and in one direction even number of values should be generated concatenated with the sender's name and with these two solutions the reflection attack can be prevented with secret key mutual authentication now let's see how the one way authentication takes place it follows two approaches that is symmetric approach and the public key approach symmetric encryption and public key encryption in symmetric encryption approach the process is same as that in the mutual authentication wherein a user a is contacting key distribution center and then key distribution is replying back to user a and then the key which the user a has received from the key distribution center is then be used by user a for com communicating with user b and in public encryption approach a has to start communication with b so whatever the message has to be transferred has to be encrypted and the hashed function hashed message needs to be created for the message which needs to be sent uh, an arrow should be there in between a and b here the challenge response mechanism of the one way authentication is given wherein we can see that alice is sending a message for bob and bob is then replying back with a challenge r message and alice then have to uh, have to authenticate bob that whatever the challenge message has been has been sent by r for alice has been received only by the alice and for that reason in the next message sent by alice to the bob alice is then encrypting that challenge message with a secret key that is a shared key so the encryption function is being utilized here and bob then just decrypts and verifies time in within allowed queue hash functionality has taken place bob needs to hash all the times in allowed intervals or send or alice sends the time the problem with this approach is authentication is not mutual only one person only one user is authenticating 
Connection hijacking can take place after the authentication process wherein the attacker can spoof Alice or Bob's source addresses and then sends the packets in the conversation which are not the encrypted one. Offline passwords can be generated depending upon the key attack and length of the key. Compromise on the database. Disk if K is stored. Temporary access can also take place. So one way authentication is vulnerable to these type of the problems. One way authentication using timestamp. Guys here timestamp is nothing but a stamp which is being then sent with every newly generated message from one side to the other. If we take the example here, I am Alice. A function has been implemented with a shared key along with the timestamp. If we take an example that I am sending a message to a particular user at suppose 10.30 a.m. So that timestamp gets attached with the message which I am sending for the user A. And then the encryption will take place along with the timestamp and the message so the timestamp and the message the plain text message will be then getting encrypted with a key so the problem with this timestamp is impersonate alice if intercepts and sends message that can be considered as a race condition if some particular user is keeping a track of all the timestamps to prevent the quick reply but if use same key with the multiple servers could then send a message to another server and impersonate the Alice, impersonate the user. So, clock skews and the synchronizations are also the problem with this one way authentication using the timestamp. One way authentication using public key is given in this slide. Alice is sending a message to Bob. Bob is then replying back with a message R. And then Alice is replying back to Bob with the same message R using its own private key for encryption process. And then the message received by the Bob will then be decrypted by Bob using the Alice's public key for verification that the message which Bob has sent to Alice is the only message which the Bob has received back or not. So in such manner, the public key here we can say that the asymmetric encryption that is one user is utilizing private key for encryption and the other one is utilizing its public key for decryption. So the public key one way authentication has ha, takes place in this manner. Thank you guys. I just hope that you might have got the concept of authentication protocols in wherein the authentication protocols are broadly classified into two categories. Thank you.